Hi, you join me while I'm doing some coax tests. I was in the 2 meter UK AC contest last night and I just had a feeling I was a little bit down on receive. So I'm just doing some tests now. Uh, got a rig on two meters. Um, it says 22 watts, but we'll see what it's putting out in a second. Uh, rig, good patch lead, meter, good patch lead, dummy load. What we're doing here initially is finding out what the rig is actually putting out for a baseline for our tests. So if we key up and we get a measure of what the rig's putting out. Uh, so let's say that's, it's bouncing around a bit, uh, 20.6. I say that's point, bouncing around between 45 and 75. So we'll say a base measurement of 20.6 watts to start with. Right, so now I've replaced the patch lead from the rig to the meter this is now my long uh, 9.2 meter lead of Westflex 103 it's a couple of years old uh, so this now goes from the rig uh, 9.2 meter lead to the meter short patch lead to the dummy load so now we're running through the long runner coax so if we key up again This is again on, uh, I've got the rig on the FM on two meters. So it's bouncing around 16 point, can we get a flicker 17, six, say 16 point eight, 16 point nine. We'll call that 16 point nine, I think. So now I've swapped out that uh, 9.2 meter length of coax, which I use uh, regularly uh, and now I've got you can see it just runs and runs away uh, a long 20 meter run of un effectively unused West Flex 103 so I think it's the same age as the other length uh, but I think I've used this twice so it's effectively brand new so if I key up again so this is 20 meters uh, a little bit more than twice the length of the other coax so what's that 16 point eight seven sixteen point well it's bouncing around between six and eight so we'll we'll call that sixteen point seven so you can see in this summary table the first column shows the the coax length i use 9.2 meters and the 3.7 watts which on my maths i think is 0 0.8 db uh, and then the new coax run uh, twice as long uh, 3.9 watts loss, so effectively the same, 0 0.9 dB in my calculations anyway. So looking online for the specs of Westflex 103, um, there's some fixed figures there given I had to estimate what 2 metres would be, which I got as a 6.1 dB loss. So that's a 100 metres run, so a 10 metre length should be 0 0.6 dB loss. So if you bear with me on this next bit, the, the test trick was the same for both lengths of coax. Uh, just the coax and their associated plugs. The plugs might be a factor, and obviously there's only two plugs on any run of coax, um, so they can only be discounted once, really. So the 0 0.8 we saw on the 10 metre run should maybe have been uh, 1.6 or maybe a bit less uh, for a 20 metre run. And likewise, uh, the 20 metre run at 0 0.9 should have been somewhere around half or a bit more uh, if we'd half that to 10 metres. So there's clearly something amiss here. Uh, and neither match exactly the, the published spec, but obviously there's other things at play in terms of plugs and so on. And having found the fault in the uh, portable VHF UHF coax, I thought just for interest I would run uh, some RG58. So now I've got attached my 17 metre run of RG58. This is what I use, uh, right here. This is what I use when I'm portable in the caravan, it fits through the caravan window. Um, so and I only use it on HF so this is the same setup um, here we go uh, 17 meters of RG 58 on two meters nine watts so nine watts out uh, for for 20 watts in 
I will keep a record of my portable contest entry so that used cable on the right has been unrolled and rolled back up 91 times over the last three and a half years. So I just thought I'd show you the insides of the coax. This is the Westflex 103, usual braid. Uh, it has this inner copper foil. The inner dielectric is air spaced and the center conductor is solid copper. So it makes it quite stiff. But it's the, well, with a lot of coaxes meant for sort of VHF and above, um, it's this foil that eventually gives way. So all the rolling up and unrolling, I mean, I won't do it now. If you imagine going like that, uh, you, could, you could crack that foil uh, and that's where it starts breaking down. Now, by comparison, I've got some RG213, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. This is very, very bendy, very flexible. Uh, braid again. No uh, inner copper foil, solid dielectric and multi-stranded core, which gives it its flexibility. And then uh, somewhere down here, here we are, I've got some uh, RG58 on a roll. So, uh, braid, inner dielectric, very small core. So if I bring them together, uh, you can see the difference. You'll find uh, Westflex 103, and RG58, I think the same amount of diameter uh, coax. So that's the difference. It's uh, it's quite significant at the high frequencies. And the downfall for mine, it won't last forever. Um, and it's the bending and unbending 91 times or thereabouts. I'm guessing has cracked that. So another thing to remember, if you've got VHF at home, maybe some coax leaving the shack, up the wall, under the gutter in my case, up the roof, onto the chimney to the collinear, don't use RG58. You'll lose half your power and the receive will be down as well by the same amount. So if you've got a fixed run of coax, you won't probably have this problem. If you've got a, a portable section of coax or one that goes up and down a mast or around a rotator, uh, then you might need to test your coax just to check it hasn't aged over time like mine has um, it's an easy thing for me to do i'll just change the the run that i use portable uh, obviously a little bit more difficult if you've got a permanent install uh, with a moving piece but uh, hope you found this video useful and uh, made you maybe think about your own coax and uh, how it's aged well by my reckoning i think that's a video 100 on the channel so that's that's three years and hundreds of hours of effort gone in hopefully you find it enjoyable uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. It helps uh, promote the channel and uh, helps me uh, to uh, produce more content. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one. 73.